Welcome back to Scene Family Outdoors. Today we're kicking off a series of videos as I plan to get ready for this summer's Canada fishing trip. All right, so welcome back. Today, there's a first video in a series I'm gonna to put together as I plan for this summer's fishing trip. Um, I'm gonna go over things like, today, the tools that I use for uh, releasing fish and just tools on the boat in general. Um, we're gonna go over rods, reels, lure selection. I'll even get into what we pack for food and meals. Uh, there's a lot of information on fly-in camps or things that are really catered uh, with meals and everything provided but I'm talking about a drive-to fishing camp where you're putting kind of your own gear in the boat going out and catching fish um, that can be intimidating for some people uh, and this is the 11th time I've gone up on a, a trip like this so I just wanted to share some of the best practices and knowledge I've gained over the years so we're gonna start with one that I think gets overlooked and that's fishing tools what things do you need to have on your boat at all times? So I'm gonna go through a few of mine, probably top favorites in order I think of importance. The first one is a set of needle nose pliers. This is the tool, right? When you're releasing large northern pike, um, if you're kept fishing for lake trout or muskie or even walleye, a big set of needle nose pliers is sure convenient. Uh, this is an 11 inch pair of pliers and that is the size I would recommend. Um, don't skimp and think that just a normal pair of needle nose pliers is sufficient. Um, you can see the size of the fish behind me. Imagine that fish and you have a, it's engulfed a lure and you need to get it out. Having that needle nose where you can reach into the fish's mouth and remove the hook is just incredibly important. Make sure you have a set of needle nose pliers. I actually carry two on the boat because it's that important and you do not want to be stranded on your trip without a good pair of needle nose pliers. Number two in importance, and another thing that I carry two of, is jaw openers or jaw spreaders. Not as important when you're fishing for, for your walleye, but if you're fishing pike or muskie, uh, having a set of jaw spreaders, again, very important. Another tool I'll carry two of. These are not expensive. This is a $10 tool. Um, when you know those pliers, you might be getting up to 20 bucks for a pair. But get yourself a couple sets of these for your boat, um, just in case that something happens and something gets dropped in the water. That stuff does happen. Uh, just be prepared for it. Another set on release tools are bolt cutters. These are bolt cutters from Nipex. Nipex bolt cutters, and they're spring-loaded. These are incredibly underrated by most folks to have in their tackle box. Uh, they are expensive, um, but Nipex bolt cutters, these handheld bolt cutters, when you get a fish that, especially a, a pike or muskie, and they have a treble hook and it's jammed in multiple spots and you're trying to get it out sometimes it's quicker and easier to just cut those hooks you're going to do a better job at reducing fish mortality get a quicker release and it just makes for an overall better experience for everything involved and when we're fishing for large pike and musky it's a catch and release game we want to make sure we're having quality releases so i'm a big fan of the needle nose pliers and if you're cutting hooks They'll go right into the next one. Get yourself a set of split ring pliers to be able to change hooks out quickly. Uh, big fan of the split ring pliers, just as a nice complimentary tool to have in your tackle box. When you're putting fresh hooks on or just going right in order, get a hook file, get it maybe even have a couple hook files. This is another one I carry two of, just because they're so inexpensive and you can put a good sharpened edge on those hooks. When you're using things like three-out treble hooks or larger, you really want to make sure you have a good pointed edge on those treble hooks. Recommend getting a hook file and keeping your hook sharp. The last two I have are scissors. And this is one I've really been a fan of. This is Boomerang Tool Company. And it's a little line cutter. And it's so nifty. It cuts through braid really easy. It kind of has a, a mini clamp carabiner type thing as well. I'm just a huge fan of this tool. When you're tying line, um, historically I always just use a good set of, of, uh, of scissors to cut through line, but what I would find is I couldn't really get cl that close if I was maybe tying a jig onto braid. I'd want to cut really close to that edge and I just always felt like I could be cutting more of that tag end off. I love how tight these are. From It's Boomerang Tool Company. Um, really, really happy using this tool as well. So that's my lineup of tools. 
you've got to have some of these in your tackle box. Now that we've hit on tools, I'm going to make a quick grab and I'm going to bring what I think is the most important tools to have when we're talking catch and release. All right, so I'm back and this is the most important tool um, to start with and it is a big net. And when you see this net, you probably think that is ridiculous. Um, this is the Fraybrill Big Game Net. Uh, it's what I would call kind of a mid-size musky net. And this looks ridiculously large if, you, if you're not fishing for pike or musky on a regular basis. If this is your first trip or maybe you're considering going up on a trip like this, it might look big, but I'm gonna show you some video quick. And, and, and this will really tell you why having a big net like this is incredibly important when we're talking big Canadian pike. So this first video, these are the two, two of the biggest, actually these are the two biggest fish I've ever caught um, in Canada and they're within a half an inch of each other at 46 and a half and 47 inches. I'll start with the one that's at 46 and a half inches and this one is going into a smaller net. And you can see as that fish gets netted, man, it <laughs> barely fits in the net. And now when you take that fish out of the net, it goes into the boat, it's flopping in the boat. It really can create issues for that fish getting injured. It puts the pressure on releasing the fish. And you think about that, that's a big fish. It's been fighting. Now it's out of the water. It can't breathe. It needs to get released and back in. It creates stress for you as an angler and that's when accidents happen. And it creates stress for the fish and that's when fish mortality goes up. This next video, I'm actually showing here, this isn't maybe the full on video, but you can see this is what a big fish looks like going into the net. This fish is 47 inches, fits right into that big net. And now when that fish is in the net, it gives me time on the boat to take a breath, get my tools out and get the hooks out. And that fish is in the water the whole time. The fish can breathe and it can recover. It lets me get in position if I want, want to take photos and really do a nice job capturing that memory of the fish. Having a big net takes care of all of that. And that net just sits perfectly in the water. So I have, this is a freight real big game net. Um, there's other nets as well of similar size. Uh, I would just recommend having a net that's marketed towards musky anglers. Maybe not one, there's a, the big kahuna is another one that's the step above this one. That might be a bit too big. Um, but I would rather err on the size of too big than too small. So this is a net I will take up and use for Northern Pike. Let me grab the walleye one quick and I'll show you that. All right, so this is the net we've used for walleye fishing. So I will use two different nets. And the good part is the handles are telescopic on both of these nets. I didn't show it on the big game, but that collapses down. Similar, the big game does the same thing. So I can get here, then this one actually will telescope out further. So this is a 20 by 23 inch net. Um, it's perfect for walleye fishing. It doesn't take up as much space. It's a little easier to handle on the smaller fish and getting a small fish out of a big net is kind of inconvenient at times. So I will bring two nets up. It's one of the benefits of going to a drive to camp is that you do have the luxury of packing maybe multiple nets, making sure you have Duplicates of tools if needed, you're not restricted by weight. So. Okay, so that wraps up the first of the series on tools to make sure that you have everything needed to release fish and have a successful fishing trip in Canada. Um, I'll keep sharing videos along the way as we get planned up and get ready on the trip. If you like this content, please subscribe to the channel. I'll be releasing a video as we get prepped for our trip every week. Uh, here for the next several weeks on prepping for this Canada trip. I'm really excited to share it with you. Uh, next time we're going to dive into fishing lure selection. So can't wait to share some of my favorite lures for fishing in Canada. Until next time, get out there and enjoy the outdoors.